Did you know that 870 million people do not have food today? Over 2.5 million children die every single year because they do not have food. Those facts come from the United Nations World Food Program. I thought, wait a minute. Their th studies saw in 2012 that malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV combined kill fewer people compared to hunger itself. Hunger kill many people every year than HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis together. It's not just those facts. I have personally lived the situation. My past is exactly those statistics. I was born and raised in Burkina Faso in West Africa, a country, landlocked country of 16 million people. My family, like many other families, face problems. Those problems are lack of clean water, lack of education, and unfortunately, hunger. We've starved. Two days without food, three days without food, was part of my life. The, the dishes that you see on the pictures are on clean water that my mother, like many other women, had to travel three miles each way to get water, which wasn't even clean. I had to drink this like many other children in the developing nations. In Burkina Faso, the CIA study shows that 90% of the population live off of farming, crops that they grow with their own hands, and primitive tools make it even worse for them to make enough food to feed themselves. Children don't have the opportunity to go to school. Instead, they have to work outside on the field all day to make food along the family to be able to survive. <clears throat> As you can see on the pictures, I want you to picture just a little bit on your right side. The container that the lady, the lady is holding, it's crop to feed 10 people in her family. That's less than a dollar a day. 10 people, less than a dollar a day. That's exactly the family I've come from. The United States, <clears throat> some studies about the developing nation shows that Burkina Faso specifically, 74% of people do not even know how to write their name. Lucky me, I'm one of the 26% that have gotten the opportunity to go to school for education. As you can see on the picture, only the very youngest have access to food, and they're being fed by an adult. Those that are a little older, like seven years or eight years, as you can see, just watch. It's not enough to give to them. That was my life. Orphanages. When I was 15, I became a Christian, and that was not acceptable in the culture I came from. Therefore, I was disowned from my family, and that's how I learned what it means to be without a family, what it means to be an orphan. I had to drop off of school, couldn't afford, and went back to school two years after, working hard and raising enough money to pay for my education, because I value education. I finally made it graduated from high school at age 24, and then at 27 years old, I made it to the United States to pursue my education. And I just graduated in May with my accounting degree at California State University, Chico. Very short, very easy to say, but the struggle I have gone through those years have shaped and changed my life in the way I think. 
I have also seen orphanages being built in the developing nations. Food has been shipped to help in the trillions of dollars, your dollars, but unfortunately, those orphanages built or school built didn't make any difference. Situation that I've even gotten worse. I'm talking out of experience. Just building orphanages does not help the orphan. I've been there. My last fact that I am about to share with you is foreign aid. As I mentioned, just giving money do not solve the problem in the developing nations. The scooter that you see here is my very friend Brian sitting on it. He went with me to Burkina Faso last summer while I'm doing my studies and development to put my idea together. What we found was this. A scooter, supposed to be an ambulance, given to a village of almost 5,000 people so that folks who are sick would be taken to the city to be treated. Unfortunately, six months after it was given, it was broken, and no one knew how to fix that equipment. As you can see, the tires, the chain, all messed up. Just giving them motorcycles, scooters like this, millions of dollars, building schools, just this doesn't solve the problem. I, like you, was overwhelmed with those problems, but yet motivated to seek for a solution. I started focusing on sustainability, cost-effective, simple solutions, but using local resources. My idea has three steps into it to solve the problem of hunger in the world. First, education. I believe in education. I wouldn't be thinking the way I do today if I did not go to school. In 2009, I selected five families. Each of them has adopted at least one orphan. I've given them bulls, local resources, and plows, local resources, and I trained them how to utilize them to form their own field rather than just with their hands. I taught them how to make food for themselves I did not just give, the, give it to them. I believe that teaching people, educating them how to utilize what is given to them is significant to help them build their own resources and be self-sufficient to feeding themselves. As a result of the training that they got, their crops start to look better, healthier, and they start producing more. In 2010, I took five more families, adopted orphan, and I gave them again, each of them two oxen, a plow, and a training. Those that we've helped in 2009, by 2011, two years, they've made three times, four times than they've ever made in a year. They even made a surplus. So I required them to use the proceeds of their surplus, sell that, and pay for the cost of education of their children. Guess what? Those first five families sell the surplus on the marketplace, use the proceed, and already have their first kids in the entire history of those families attending school as I'm speaking to you. <clears throat> that is the, the key to changing the way things are done in the developing nations. Education, I believe, is gold. It's the most effective key that can solve the problem of hunger so that the 870 million will have access to food by themselves. The next round of family that we've given, the two oxen and a plow, they, from 2010 to 2012, just sent their first kids to school two weeks ago, and I'm still waiting for pictures. Ten kids at school paid by themselves. The parents take care of that. After ensuring that every single person in the family have enough food to eat. Next, my number second thing is training. Any success without a successor is a failure. Just giving them bulls and plows, 
just giving them a scooter, ambulance like you've seen in the picture, just giving them money does not solve the problem. We got to train the developing nations how to handle their own issues. <clears throat> I also saw that by training, we can bring people up to the expect, their own expectation. On that picture, I want you to look at your right side. That lady, that is uh, at your uh, left side, excuse me, that lady is working her buns off. <laughs> She's doing her best, but it's just not the right equipment that can provide her with food to feed her family and send her kids to school. Never happened. But with the bulls and the plow, after the training, work is fun. Everybody want to see it. Everybody want to enjoy it. There is no excuse for not sending your kids to school because they actually replace the school on the field. I designed a well, clean water well, that now provides 4,000 people with clean water every single day. That's not just my point. I've selected five, I've selected four, four women in the village and trained those four women how to clean the well, make sure it's clean all the time. And three men, we've trained them how to fix the well when it's broken. You don't just design it, drill it, and then leave. No. I've trained them how to utilize it. And today, even though I'm not there, they're doing amazingly great. I believe that by training them, we're making them responsible of their own issues. We're making them accountable of their own problems. We're making them the leaders to take in hands their own situations and deal with it. Last but not least, sustainability. I don't just give them the plows. No, I made sure that they train, and because of the training, they're capable of making enough crop to feed every single person in the family. A medium-sized family is 12 people. Everybody get food. On top of that, their surplus is sold, and kids get the opportunity to go to school rather than working on the farm. That's the first key. The well that we've designed and drilled for them, the women, those four women are handy, responsible, taking care of it every single day, making sure that it's clean. They feel so honored. They feel so responsible. Those three men are working to maintain it, make sure it's, it's uh, fixed if it's broken, so every single person can have access to clean water on a daily basis. We've also built a trough away from the well that provides the same clean water to the bulls. If we want them to work on the field for people, we got to make sure they're healthy. That's sustainability. And the good news is, five years after we've given them the oxen and the plow, because they've taught how to take care of the oxen, and oxen have access to clean water, guess what? They grow bigger and bigger. So at five years, I require those families to sell their bulls, because they're big enough. When your car broke, or you use it for five years, you gotta give it away or recycle it. The bulls is the opposite. When you use them to produce a lot of food to feed in your family and pay for your kids to go to school, after five years, you sell them and make double of how much you get them at the beginning. So I ask the family to take half of that proceed after selling the oxen and use that to buy back younger bulls, and the training continues, the cycle continues in the family. As the cycle continues, every single family is capable of having enough food and affording the cost of education of their own children. The other half is used to finance the schooling of their first child and send a second one and a third one, and cycle continues for generation. That's sustainability, and that's how we can hand hunger in the developing nations. Although local resources might be different from one nation to the other, the idea remains the same. 
using local resources in a strategic and sustainable way that people would be able to produce for themselves and be responsible. That can be done through education, training, and sustainability. Together, I believe, as you can think, if we could give every single family in Burkina Faso, out of those 16 million, if we could give them each two oxen and a plow and train them how to use them, how many people would be having food? How many children would be going to school? How about if we apply that to Togo, Benin, Senegal, Chad? How about Haiti, Papua New Guinea? Wouldn't we hand the hunger and give opportunity to those who can't afford to have food? I believe that together, every family, two oxen and a plow, one child at a time, we can solve the hunger problem in the world. Thank you.